the shocking truth about the carnivore diet that you need to know. Yes, Dr. Gondry wants to reveal a shocking discovery about the carnivore diet, okay? The carnivore diet. And guess what? His revelation is not pretty at all. Now, why is this important? Well, it is important because Dr. Gondry is a man who wrote a book discouraging people from eating plants. And his reason for discouraging people from eating plants is... And let's be clear. Plants do not want you to eat them, even so-called friendly plants. Meaning, he, Dr. Gondry, wants you to be consuming animal products, inclusive of meat, instead of eating plants like these that are supposed to heal you. What other conclusion can you reach from a man who wrote a book discouraging people from eating plants like these ones that I've got here? So much so that some people have described Dr. Gondry as the as the father of the carnivore diet, as some people have accused me. And now he is retracing his steps and in fact contradicting himself by saying But before we say, well, if plants are so bad for you, all of us should be eating a carnivore diet, not so fast. Ah, then he continues. First of all, there's absolutely zero evidence of long-living people eating a carnivore diet. A society that follows a carnivore diet does not exist. And one would think with so much experimentation with food around the world for millennia, if a carnivore diet was as good as its proponents say it is for long-term health, Surely, we should have been able to find a society that has long-term great health on a carnivore diet. And that simply does not exist. I have to say, I agree with you there, Dr. Gondry. Now, what does Dr. Gondry think is the real reason people in the blue zones live longer? In fact, looking at areas of the world that have extreme longevity, the blue zones and other zones that I've talked about in my book, all of these areas have one thing in common. All of these areas, in general, eat a very low animal protein diet. And as I've written about in all my books, that's what appears to be the major driver of this longevity. Okay, so enough about the preamble. Let's get to the meat of the presentation, if you pardon the pun. So, what is the real concern for Dr. Gondry regarding consumption of meat, in particular red meat? First of all, there is a sugar molecule in beef, lamb, and pork called NU5GC. That sugar molecule is distinctly different from the sugar molecule that lines the blood vessels of chicken, fish, and us. We have an antibody that can be developed when we're exposed to NU5GC containing foods that we will attack our own blood vessels with that antibody. So we don't want an autoimmune attack on our blood vessels. And there is considerable experimental evidence that one of the reasons that red meat promotes heart disease is actually from this molecule NU5GC prompting an autoimmune attack on our blood vessels. Aha, so that's reason number one. Let's get to reason number two, according to Dr. Gondry. The other thing that's concerning is that tumor cells can use NU5GC to hide from our immune system, to cloak themselves. Now here's the deal. You and I do not produce NU5GC. So the only place a tumor cell could get NU5GC is for you to eat it. 
in beef, lamb, or pork. And that's why there is an association. Now just remember, association does not mean causation, but there is an association between red meat eating and cancer, particularly colon cancer and even breast cancer. So our species became completely different. One of the reasons we think is because of this new 5AC mutation. Okay, so now does Dr. Gondry actually have any evidence that the carnivore diet, as it is, is bad for health? Let's hear what evidence he's got. But all of my carnivore diet patients, when we look at their inflammatory markers, over time, their inflammatory markers, markers of vessel flexibility, begin to get worse and worse. So short term to fix a problem with an affront of plant compounds against your gut, I've got nothing wrong with that. But long term, I can tell you in my patient population, it looks like a recipe for a disaster. And again, if this was such a good idea, we should be able to find a society with incredibly long-lived healthy people who have adopted a carnivore diet. I'm sorry, they just can't be found. Finally, just remember, as in general, and I agree with Dr. Walter Longo with this, the less animal protein that you can get, the better. And when I ask my patients to reduce animal protein, I see dramatic re reductions in a blood marker called insulin-like growth factor. And as a general rule, the lower your insulin-like growth factor, the longer you live, the longer you live well, and quite frankly, the less chance of cancer developing. So why not go after that? Okay, yeah, so I'm... just a quick word about the new 5GC uh, that uh, Dr. Gondry was referring to in the video. The other name for new 5GC is N-glycolyl neuraminic acid. N-glycolyl neuraminic acid. That's the other name for new 5GC. New 5GC is a sialic acid molecule found in most non-human mammals. So the key phrase there is non-human mammals. Humans cannot synthesize new 5GC. We can't. We don't have the potential to make it in our body. So if new 5GC is found in your body, that means you consumed it. That means you ate it simply because we don't synthesize it. New 5GC is high in red meat, pork, beef, and lamb, right? Now, one more thing you want to remember about new 5GC is that it is particularly high in the organs of those mammals. So if you're someone who is an organ meat eater, you want to be very careful how much of the organ meats you consume because you've got very high levels of new 5GC in those organ meats. You have it in the meat itself, but you know higher levels are found in the organ meats. And uh, of course, uh, there is an association between the new 5GC and you know some cancers as well as heart disease. So please be careful. One more thing to note is that new 5GC is found in dairy. It is particularly high in the colostrum of those bovines. So you also want to be very careful if you're someone who consumes a lot of dairy, you might be raising the levels of new 5GC in your body. Now, I am not someone who usually agrees with Dr. Gondry and his proclamations, but this is one occasion where I actually do agree with him. Um, see, the idea behind this very video is not necessarily to scare you uh, if you are someone who consumes lots of red meat, but you may want to look at the evidence, uh, and it, a lot, there's a lot of evidence today that you know there's something not so good about eating red meat. And uh, but if you want to persist, okay, if you want to persist in consuming your meat, my only advice to you would be that at least you should consider reducing your consumption that is the only advice that i'll give to you if you cannot eliminate red meat out of your diet completely 
then the very least you can do is reduce your consumption to maybe once or twice a week so uh, if you do that you will be reducing your risk because you got to ask yourself the question why is red meat always in the news and the news is not always good news as far as red meat consumption is concerned so um you know that's just something for you to remember is it that people are against red meat everyone is against red meat everyone is against you not necessarily it's just that there is something that is not so healthy about you know red meat consumption and that's the way I wanted to look at this very video presentation. So uh, you make of that what you will, but at the end of the day, you're the one who is going to make the choices for yourself, okay? So I'm hoping you got some value from this very video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up, please like the video, and also please share this video with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues. If you've got any questions or any comments regarding this very video presentation, go ahead, leave your comments or questions down below. By the way, don't forget to go to askdrjo.org. Over there, you can ask any questions that uh, you want. And also show your support for this very channel. So, I think that's it for today. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.